Hi everyone, um, looks like that's the stream up and running, so probably time to get us into sequence. Welcome to another edition of Castle Sempo the Club Racing. And we have a fairly decent turnout again. Um, me, Zim, Steve D, uh, Arthur, uh, Waterboy, who I've forgotten whose handle that is. Tony Fitz. You have a good race too, Tony. Uh, Graham Busby and winner takes all. By the way, in case anyone was curious about our mystery competitor last time, um, uh oh stinky, I looked up the flag and it is a Fijian flag, so I don't know if you know anyone from Fiji, I think it <laughs> clears up absolutely nothing having that information now. Him with have a good race, then instantly gets a penalty. And so, Waterboy is fine here. I'm probably just going to get through this gap. Luckily, and it was, yes, Steve D had a penalty there off the start line. Tony's having great fun with the chat buttons. So in this front row here, there is Waterboy, me, and then Tony and Zim fighting out on the right hand side. Those guys are of course teammates on the uh, Scottish rep team this year. So perhaps a bit of a friendly rivalry going on there. Looks like those two out on the right hand side, apart from mashing the chat buttons, are the leaders in the race. With the wind just in the right here, they've got a fairly good advantage. Slightly further down the field, we got Graham and Steve D heading out to the right, and Arthur and Winner Takes All converging now in the centre. There is slightly less breeze in the centre by the looks of it. But especially in the J70, which obviously won't play enough wind, I doubt it is worth uh, ignoring the shifts just to try and get better pressure. Okay, Tony is now tacked off. I think uh, he was getting pinched a little by Zim, but he's still got control on that right hand side. Um. Somebody has just messaged me about commentary, um, potentially Jan. Um, I have to sort that out after the race. Okay, and now the wind has gone left. Okay, so this is going to suit me, um, and it's unfortunate for Waterboy because he's now overlaid the mark. He's just going to drop down into my wind shadow when previously he was just sitting just above that area of disturbed wind. Zim and Tony are now coming across. Uh, I think the left shift should mean I get across just in front of Zim, but when I duck down for the mark, I'm going to have issues with Tony, I think. And that is a, a pretty fortuitous shift there. And yeah, Waterboy has been uh, really badly affected by that. He was ahead of the... Oof. <laughs> Not sure what's happened to Zim there. Um, Tony's apologising, so I'm going to assume it was your fault, Tony. This looked like some minor carnage around that mark. Okay, Tony's jibed off. I'm just going to go towards the same side as the beat as him. Or, sorry, the same side as the run. Just to make sure. I obviously don't want to be sitting in his wind shadow, but I want to make sure that he doesn't get anything massive in the way of a shift or a gust that I don't. So most boats are going down to this side, but Waterboy is split off. I think there is more pressure out in this side, and also the shift is saying uh, we're sailing close to the mark in this shift. 
Okay, so when I jibe off, Tony is going to be able to get a really hard... Yeah, he's covering me pretty hard now. And jibe off and jibe off again, just trying to get clear breeze. And he's coming with me. Okay, could be in bother here now at this mark, because Tony's going to be jiving onto starboard as well, and I do not trust the rules engine one inch when it comes to mark rim. Uh, and Tony's got a much better mark around than I have. Okay, yeah, he's done well there. So Tony takes the lead, and he's got me pretty well pinned here. I can't really tack, not until I drop out the back here, and there is a wee gap back to the next set of boats as well. So Zim has split off, Waterboy's tacked as well, but I think we've probably got enough of a lead that Tony can really focus on me rather than those two. Okay, and Jan's in now. So. Welcome to the chat. You've just about you've just made a pretty sweet move from Tony on me there at the one side of the lured gate. And I've got the the flashing internet sign of doom here, but so far the connection seems to be holding up okay. So we've got Zim who will potentially cross in front. If he doesn't cross in front, he's going to force Tony to tack, which is going to force me to tack. So I'm just going to go for it early, get this over with, and try. Oh, Tony's ducking Zim now, that's an interesting one. And the wind is about to go left, you can tell from just the wind socks here, show the wind at the top of the course. So yeah, the wind's gone left now, so I can tack off onto the lift. I've actually overcooked that slightly, I'm over the A line. But Zim's had quite a good beat there. Tony is now going to come for me. No, Tony's tacking off. So, could have a bit of fun and games now in this run with the three of us rounding. And I think we've all shown a, a willingness on these downwind legs and attack each other. So, yeah, it'll be fun to see how it goes. Okay, Zim has tacked off onto starboard. So, I'm just going to have to duck behind him. Tony has to give me room. Tony's. Ah. Okay, that was um, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, the internet is uh, having all sorts of fun here. It cost me a couple of places. Oh well, that's a pity. I was looking forward to having a bit of a fight with him and Tony down that run. But, yeah, Virgin Media decided that my boat would much rather be going at 35 knots backwards and round in circles. band of wind down here. And every time I jive behind Steve, it takes a little bit more of his wind. Yeah, and Steve has gone out of the band of wind now. Arthur and Waterboy are fighting just ahead, but I think they're probably just about far enough in front of us, this group, to um, have their place. And I think Steve probably just about has me. Oh no, actually, it's going to be close. I'm trying to get him on starboard. Oh. <laughs> okay. Good race, everyone. Uh, well done to Zim, who was the eventual winner. Uh, we'll get an, an old photo of these. I'm going to try entering them in more or less real time into my spreadsheet so I don't forget them this time. So we'll see how that goes. I'll get the next race set up and then we'll our 
we're waiting for the three minutes to happen. I'll try and get these results entered. Right, create. Probably a slight risk going for the foiling knacker is when my internet is showing signs of lagging, but let's see how it goes. Harry looking. Another minute until we get into sequence. And yeah, the stream is what we're working. Blech. Okay, welcome to the race and Mike. Glad to see you made it. And that is about time to get into All sequence right, Harry for looking. race two. Another minute until we get into sequence. Some might say it's too, too many. So, eight boats for the second race. Uh, so who hasn't come back? Uh, no sign of Waterboy this time. I think he's the one we've lost. seconds to go and I've been given the time at the line race help here which is actually very useful in the macros okay yeah that starts going fairly well Same as <laughs> we've gone for that gap. It was a, a risky move because I had inside overlap 
and I was lured boat. And it's worked out okay for him. I'm just going for the ah, <laughs> going for the um, unfavored side of the gate. For some reason, my spinnaker didn't come down there. Um, okay, so I've lost out there. Um, not just because I couldn't get my spinnaker down, but uh, the other guys have gone. That side, the left hand side of the gate here was slightly biased, slightly further upwind, and also there's a good bit more pressure out in the left side of this beat. So Zim has come out well, Steve D has come out well, uh, Tony, Arthur and Graham. Okay, I've dropped down big time there. Uh, a tactical blunder there. I have to live with it. So in this leading group, they're all much of a muchness to be honest, in terms of height. Um, with this wind a little bit in the left and the pressure to the left, Zim probably has a slight advantage, but it's not huge and it's going to mean that we can have a decent battle on the downwind. Probably the best battle is going to be between Steve and Tony. Okay, firing in attack. said people have actually spread out quite a bit. Some of the things about the knacker is you think you're going to have a good battle downwind but they accelerate so quickly when you go through that top gate that boats tend to spread out quite a lot and sometimes the downwind turns into a little bit of a procession. That's a slightly less shocking mark rounding from me. Only slightly, but I think it's put a little bit of daylight between me and Arthur. So Zin still has the lead here. Steve is splitting off to the right. He's the only boat from that leading pack going off to that side. Uh, Zim and Tony heading off to the left. Graham has done very well there, um, potentially on a shift maybe, I uh, didn't see where he came from but he was just behind me and, well he was quite a bit behind me and now he's pulled back in and Arthur has now pulled back in again as well on that shift and he's going to force me to tack. And these boats are not quick to tack. So nice going from those two to get back in the game. Um, and looks like Wright has paid up this beat because Steve, who, as I said earlier, was the only boat who went to the right, has actually come across and crossed Zim. I'm going to duck Arthur here now. Oh, Zim is now... I think got back in front as they come down to the turning mark. I didn't see what happened there. I've had a slightly quicker mark rounding than the guys ahead, and sorry, than the guys behind. So it looks like yeah, Zim has won the race. Steve D second, then Tony Fitz, me and Arthur just behind. Strong start to the series from Zim. Starting there. Floor, je moet niet een andere kamer blijven. Je moet niet een andere kamer blijven. Moet 
<laughs> ja, je, je maag in heer zitten. Je kan nog praten als je in de kamer bent. Oké, okay, let's get this race set up. Results entered while we're waiting for everyone to get to the racing area. So, for Zim, second for Steve, third for Tony, fourth for me, fifth for Arthur, sixth for Graham. AC Millen. Sorry in advance, Mike, if I've spelt your name wrong. Uh, that's the seventh. And winner takes all, gets eight. So it'll take a couple of races before the uh, the results spreadsheet is actually able to calculate a proper series score with discards. happen eventually. In fact, we can just sort by gross score for now, because discards don't kick in until race 4. And one minute to go until we go into sequence. We've got 8 boats, and I think the same 8 boats we had for the last race. does make my life a little bit easier not having to calculate DNFs and so on. Bit of a pin bias on the line. Although I don't know if that will still be around once we get to the actual start gun. Okay, and that is time, just as my internet starts to crop out. See, I know I'm moaning about it, but it's actually fine. Internet speeds are a lot of Wednesday. Uh, and we've got... Oh, oh, Stinky has joined us. Our Fijian friend. Yeah, have a good race, Tony. So hard to tell who people are. Zim is black boat here. Apart from that, it is tricky to tell who everyone is. It looks like the wind is okay, the wind is very much on the left at the moment, but it's gonna shift back to the right looking at the wind intelligence here. So it'll be a case of trying to get across to that left hand side as quickly as possible once we start.
the wind is shifting already, so I'm not going to be able to tack onto the, the lifting tack. I am going to be able to squeeze Mike, I think that is. See, so yeah, Mike was just sitting in my Lee Bow Air and drifting down until he picked up the penalty. And now he's ended up in the second row. Okay, so most of the fleet seem to be going left, but there is this group that's split off towards the right. There's Zim and Tony. And now towards that side, there's probably something in it. And yeah, sure enough, the wind is just keeping on clocking slightly to the left. Or sorry, slightly to the right. I've really got to sort my lefts and rights out if I'm going to be doing commentary on races where it's such a key thing. Um, I'm definitely not going to be able to get across the fleet, so I'm kind of reliant on Arthur as the one with control here, and to a lesser extent Stinky, because I'm not going to cross Steve until he goes off. So this entire group is just going to keep on trucking off beyond the ley line until Arthur decides that he's good and ready to make his run for the mark. And he has no reason to... Oh no, he's gone now. I'm fairly sure I'm already overlaid just about crossing Mike. Okay, so if the breeze holds like this, then I'm only a little bit overlaid, but Arthur will still have control, so I think... Oh, an interesting... Yeah, Tony and Zim are coming across as well, so this is going to be quite congested coming up to the top mark. Looks like they're going to cross Arthur, which means they're definitely going to cross me. It's very aggressive, Tony. Calm down. Okay, Zim has, <laughs> Zim has just done the proper hard tack on top of Arthur there. Although, to be fair to him, if he hadn't, he would have been in Tony's dirt. I'm just going to try and stay high here, so stay out of the wind shadow for as long as possible. But this entire group of boats is going to get across me, I think. And unless I'm quite lucky, I think I'm going to have problems with Arthur and Mike as well when they come across. I know I was a little bit ahead of them initially, I was a little bit ahead of Mike, not Arthur, but I'm going to give up a lot of distance ducking down to the ley line now. Right, Mike has gone and Arthur's gone. Okay, so it could be alright. I might be able to sneak into this gap here behind Zim. Might be able to. Ah, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's my bad. I fully deserve that penalty. It's what I guess you'd call a calculated risk. I think even with that penalty, I would have lost more if I... Ah. <laughs> okay, and that's internet lagging, making me crash into the mark. That's not what I wanted in my life. Um, yeah, calculated risk. It would have cost me more to um, duck that entire train of boats hitting the ley line there than it would have just to pick up the spin. So Steve is now coming down on top of me. So yeah, it's Tony and Zim fighting for the lead, then this second group of Arthur and uh, Mike. Just to make a change, Arthur is fighting with Mike instead of Steve. I'm going to try and get across to this side, because essentially I want to get out of Steve's wind shadow. And if I sail in a direction that forces Steve, if he wants to cover me, he now has to um, sail in another boat's wind shadow. I'm not sure how much sense that made my explanation, but... Okay, Arthur and Mike have chosen that side of the gate. I'm going to Try and take this one and go for an early tack. Don't 
the wind is going to go to the left at some point. Look at the wind intelligence here and then probably go back to the right. So I'm just going to try and play the shifts up this beat. Going for the favoured side of the gate has really pulled me back in on Arthur here. Which is good. He's going to attack underneath my Li Bao. I'm going to attack off. And looking at the wind intelligence, the wind is going to go back right. Yep, yeah, here it comes. I think it's keep, going to keep on going further though, so I'm going to try and keep on sailing out in this tack. Uh, Tony has the advantage over Zim now. And Mike is beating our and he's actually extended quite a lot there. I think he's Mike's gotten on the better side of the shifts than Arthur has. Meanwhile, in this group, slightly further back, there's one Stinky and Steve D. So I didn't see what happened to Steve. Uh, I know he was covering me quite hard down the run, but I think he managed to get in a battle with these other, which has cost him a bit of distance. And I managed to just get a little bit of clear air. Um, Graham has now caused big problems for Arthur. And force Arthur to attack, and Arthur's attack's a bit slow, which ended up in him getting rolled. In the meantime, Mike has done really well here, and he's really closed the gap on Zim and Tony at the front. I'm just going to keep on sailing a little bit here. The later I attack, the easier it'll be for me to get clear air on Mike, and the more dirty air I'll give to Graham. Nothing personal, Graham, but... Got to play the fleet. <laughs> yes, Tony, you are having a good race. are actually reasonably spread out here now. Um, probably just a little bit too spread out for us to have a really intense battle. The interesting point will now Tony jives back in towards the center because that's when Zim will be able to attack him. I think yeah I'm probably slightly behind Mike to really affect but so the battle for the lead is going to be the interesting one here. So when Tony jibes onto uh, starboard to go for the mark, he's going to be right in Zim's wind shadow. But he's going to have right away. So he's heading across quite wide here. So I guess the aim would be to jive onto starboard and come and attack Zim. Because if you can get Zim a penalty, then it'll really set Zim's plans back a bit. And in the meantime, the more these guys slow each other down, the more me and Mike will close in. So yeah, Tony's now crossing in front of Zim, just about, but Zim, who's hidden behind this crying face, is now really getting on Tony's wind. I don't think Zim's going to have quite enough to get him before the line, though. Yeah, it'll be close. But Tony's through. And Mike will have the advantage on me as well. And meanwhile behind, there's a little bit of a fight going on between uh, Arthur and Graham, but again, I think Graham probably has just enough of a lead that Arthur isn't going to be able to get him before the line. Okay. Less than a second between Tony and Zim at the end. Looks like that's going to be the, the fight for the lead of this series. 
get the next race set up, get the results entered, and then we'll get the last race before lunch going. So one for Tony, two for Zim, third for Mike, fourth for me, fifth for Graham and Arthur, Steve, winner takes all, and to add an extra row. Right, one minute to go. And a bit of change in personnel this time. And uh, joining us, hey Justin. Um, yeah, adding a bit of uh, regional variety to the sailing. We got uh, people from England, Scotland, Ireland, and potentially Fiji. And that is time to get into sequence. Ah, oh, and Zim just gets in in time. Yeah, if Zim had, had to use up his discard in this race, it would have made things interesting. So that is our eight. We've lost Mike. Uh, his coffee breaks over. But we've gained Justin. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide a fair trade. Okay, I haven't got wind intelligence this time. Looks like I've got time at the line and wind shadow maybe as my oh no, I've got ley lines, ley lines, so my, my race helps. So I get two random free race helps for every race with the the VIP account that the RYA have kindly provided. And that is go. Okay, so a fairly clean start at that time, not many penalties. Uh, however, this is Tony and a pink boat, so Justin or Steve. Justin absolutely flying off the line there, lots and lots of pace. I mean, 
is clocking back across now. I'm going to go for my tack and hopefully cross in front of Stinky. But I want to be on this lifting tack now. So yeah, this group here is going to be in big, in better pressure, Ooh. and on the right side of the shift. <clears throat> so these guys, um, yeah, Justin and Tony, it'll all come down to whether their start was good, whether it was good enough to make up for the fact that they're just on the wrong side of the shift and pressure. It doesn't look like it's been enough for Tony as he's coming across there now. Might be a bit better for Justin. Justin had his nose out in front. I think the real winner here is Stinky. It's just so ridiculous saying that name. Okay, Justin coming across now, and it looks like it'll be tight. But I think I should be able to throw in the Levi tack. Yeah. So here comes the tack. I think he's tacked below the ley line. Tony has dropped back into the pack and it looks like he's picked up a penalty. So Stinky Rain's in the lead. Where's his mark going? He's gone quite high. Just let me and Justin back into the game. Oh, now he's really coming down aggressively with the spinnaker up, though. Oh, and he's dived into Justin. Okay, so Justin's done well there. He's come in quite aggressively on starboard. And managed to block Stinky's bear away. And Stinky's picked up the penalty which has put him down in the pack with Zim, which is not really to be. Zim's boat and boat tactics are quite good. He's coming back now. Uh, Justin's got the lead. I think Justin got the better of a shift down that run. I'm not going to engage him too hard just now. I don't really want to get into a, a pitched battle at this stage of the race. I just want to put a little bit of ground between me and the boats behind. It's been quite a slow start to the series for me, so I don't really want to take risks. I ideally want to be using my discards on the races that have just happened instead of getting dragged into the pack and getting some fives and sixes. At the moment, I think Justin still has the advantage over me. He's sailing into better breeze, so I'm not going to gain on him too much. <coughs> and he's also going to be tapped. On the plus side, I'm looking fairly good on the boats behind at the moment. But of course, that can all change very quickly. And yeah, Justin's taking another big bite out of me. Just he gets into that breeze and takes off. I was saying about the, the Jays and the Stars heading upwind, the pressure isn't that important because they don't play in upwind. The 49ers do. Their speed is a lot more sensitive to the wind speed. So sometimes you can afford to ignore the shift slightly and just go for pressure and get a big advantage out of that. Far more in the 49ers than you would in some of the other classes. Justin's ended up overlaying slightly, but I've gone, I tacked slightly below the ley line just to make sure I wasn't sailing in through his dirty air, and so he's going to be ahead of me at the mark. Zim is coming in behind, fairly close to Tony. So Tony, who had dropped back quite a lot, has actually worked his way back into the race. Just looking for breeze upwind there. Justin's jived off. Right, 
It does look like there's going to be breeze coming down on this side, the side that Justin and I are heading to. You can see it coming down there. Actually, it just looks like the breeze is coming down from either side. So at the moment, my wind shadow will be in this sort of region here. So Justin's not in at the moment, but he will have to jibe at some point, and that's when I can make my move and jibe across and try and cover him. Which is now. Too slow. Reactions weren't quick enough. And Justin has come through quite nicely there. And Zim is just behind. Zim, then Tony. Alright, well done Justin. Good race. So it looks like Justin, me, Tony... No, Justin, me, Zim, then Tony. And a bit of a gap to Arthur, Steve, winner takes all. And... Yeah, poor Stinky. Had a really good start, was in the mix, but then picked up a couple of penalties, and that's really dropped him back. Okay, so that's a halfway point in the series. Um, I'll get these results all logged. And, yeah, let's say five past three for the next race.
Okay, and we are back. And I have no idea where my boat is in relation to the course. Yeah, oh, wait, there, there's a start line. Cool. <laughs> right, let's get going. Five past three. So down to seven boats now, and no Tony just at the moment. See, probably has another false start. <laughs> okay, well, that plays into Zim's hands because at the moment Tony is his only real rival for the lead of the series. Justin, even with his win in the last race, will have to carry uh, at DNC. So, unless he absolutely smashes the rest of the races, which is the then it's going to be tough for him to get back anywhere near Zim. I think I'm probably a bit too far back as well. Okay, uh, not my best start ever. Over the line, then hitting the committee boat. But the shift has played into my hands here. Uh, and now it's gone back. So yeah, Zim has come out of that the best. And I'm just going to tack off now and try and maintain a lane. I think Zim will probably try and get across the bow of this yellow and the blue boat, which will be Steve and Arthur. And then tack off to cover them. At some point I'm going to have to... Oh no, Justin's going there now. I thought I was going to tack off to avoid him. But not. Um, Zim is now heading out to the left. He is. Hmm. Not sure what his logic behind that is. I don't know if he has um, wind intelligence on and there's something about to happen. But he's split off from the fleet, which isn't usually what you do when you're leaving the race. You must try and stay between the fleet and the wind. Um, Arthur's probably going to pick up a penalty there. I oh, know Justin's picked up a penalty. Ugh. That is. Um, that was tight. Very tight. And I would have said from the time that Arthur finished his tack that Justin didn't really have much time to avoid. And I'm going to get a penalty for Arthur. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's absolutely fair. wind massively in the left, okay, so potentially Zim does have wind intelligence on and that's why he chose to split from the fleet because that left left shift will have benefited him, I think although, coming in from the left hand ley line he's actually lost out to Steve forget how long it takes to hoist the kite and these things. Crews, take note. Five seconds is an unacceptably long time to hoist the spinnaker. So, this skewed with the wind this far on the left. 
it doesn't make any sense to do anything other than go for this side of the gate, I think. And it's going to be a little bit more congested, but I might just have to deal with that. And just sail in Arthur's dirt for a little bit. And sail another couple of lengths and tack, and hopefully I'll have a lane on Justin here. Here we go. Yep, and Arthur's holding on. Okay, so at least I'll have a lane up to the next mark now. And interestingly, uh, Zim and Steve have split. So Steve's all the way in the right, Zim's all the way in the left. And Steve, you'd think, would be ahead just from the fact that he's further up, but the shifts in this race have been quite big, so really anything could happen. They're about as split up as it's possible to be. The wind has gone slightly to the left, a couple of degrees, which should benefit Zim. And it's actually clocking further to the left now. Okay, so that's interesting. You see Steve was ahead, I think, at that lured gate, but decided not to cover Zim, and he's lost out there. And has dropped him back into this pack of four boats. Yeah, this could be an interesting battle coming down the run here now. There's, Zim has pretty much got this race sealed, I think. He's well ahead. But these four boats here, um, me, Arthur, Justin and Steve, are all definitely within striking distance of each other. Arthur's jibed off. Let's see what the wind is doing behind looks like this side is going to be the side to be on in terms of pressure at least so I'm happy enough just to stick on here let's let these guys fight it out Actually, it looks like I've lost here. Yeah, I think potentially I've lost out a little bit in a shift. I don't think there's a huge amount in it in terms of pressure. But these guys are going to have an interesting fight now down to the line. It's uh, Steve just ahead. Then probably Arthur then Justin and then me okay let's get the next race set up
and Tony's back. Sorry, Tony, we let Zim win that last race. It's made your job a little difficult. So that's current results, um, with one discard applied, no Graham. So yeah, starting in the port tack is sometimes a good idea in the cats. Um, if you can get a clear lane, because it means you have to do one fewer tacks up the beat. And cats are dog slow to tack. For all their money virtues. And as it happens for this beat as well, there was a lovely big battle right here too. Just with the way the wind is at the moment, I think the boats to the ah yeah the left shift has worked out in Donny's favour. I have to sail through a bit of dirt here. That's a big left shift. Donny didn't even go particularly far left, but he was the the furthest left out of the the leading bunch. Donnie and Justin fighting for the lead now. Justin is, yeah, he's not yet laying the mark there, he's not far off now. Okay, and that's, um, <laughs> yeah, internet says no. <laughs> So yeah, Arthur's picked up a penalty there. We didn't see what it was for and all the, the carnage of boats flying around as things updated. It looks like no major changes in the order. Donnie solid lead. Justin second. level pegging with Steve. And as you might have seen in the results when they went up earlier, Steve and I have the same number of points and he's beating me just on came back, so this is fighting for series position now, me and Steve. The 
fighting for a series podium place actually. Not quite laying the mark either. Arthur's just crossing the pair of us. And you know, he's not massively far off the group either, so I have to watch out for him. Uh, okay, and not much I could have done there to avoid you there, Steve. and get control out on this side. I think Arthur's probably just a little bit too far ahead after I got that penalty. Let's get the boat up on the foils. And try to avoid getting rolled by Steve. And that leading group, Donnie is below the rest of them. Um, he's got this race in the bag. and try and take out Steve. This is a tight finish. But yeah, just about. Gotcha, Steve. Point two of a second. Okay, let's get this next race set up. Okay, let's get this show on the Okay, Tony making the ley line call there, and Arthur is gone. The wind has gone to the right slightly, so that benefits Tony. Oh, that's coming, coming back into the centre. See if I can spectate the race.
that's Donnie leading the race away and behind here so this is the big battle Justin and Zim and they just split off from each other there and they're actually close enough to attack Donnie as well he's just on the fringe of their wing But they're all going for that one side of the gate. Seems to a good mark rounding there. Uh, that's Justin has gone for the unfavoured side of the gate. So following Donny, the wind looks like it's fairly square further up the beach, so there's not going to be any massive shifts coming into play. I think Zim here is just going to want to keep in the game. He's got a nice clear. Uh, run all the way up to the top mark and he's just gonna, gonna want to keep close enough to Donnie to attack on the downwind. Donnie's coming back across now and Zim is attacking across as well. Just to try and keep his breeze clear. I think yeah his nose is just out in front. Ooh. Meanwhile Tony and Justin have both headed right. It does look like they're heading into a little bit more breeze. But from the looks of it, Donnie's just going to take Zim all the way to the ley line, and Zim's going to sail in through dirt. Yeah, Zim's just tacked off there. Donnie's gone straight on top of him. You can see Zim sitting right smack bang in the middle of Donnie's wind shadow there. So Donnie will extend on him there now. Just whether Donnie will extend enough to gain an advantage or uh, get some clear air downwind. A lot will come down to how clean their mark ratings are as well. And of course, a slight complicating factor of Tony coming in off the ley line here. Ooh, and a huge right shift and a huge left shift. Something weird's going on with the wind here. But that left shift isn't going to help Tony now. Or, sorry, not going to help Justin. It's going to help Tony, who is out in the left here. Um. Yeah, Donnie has pulled out a bit of a gap on Zim there now. Zim coming in off the ley line. And he's probably going to be just about just too far away to really attack Donnie on this downwind, especially with Tony attacking him. And Tony will attack him because they're the guys fighting for the lead of the series. Let's just take a little look at this battle back here between Arthur, Steve and winner takes all because this is a fairly close one as well. These guys are just sailing off in a bit of a train at the moment. It'll just come down to when Zim jibes, so I'll try and keep half an eye on that one for you as well. But, there's Arthur leading this group now, and Steve is sitting just to lure the winner takes all. And the spinnakers are going up. Ooh, uh, Steve has had a bit of a moment there, he's gone up, so this group has now spread out, Arthur's got the cleanest mark rounding, and he's gone out in front. So let's go and have a look at the leading. Yeah, Tony is now attacking Zim hard. Zim is luffing Tony up, he's going to try and get him a penalty, and yeah, Tony tried to get the jibe onto starboard, but didn't jibe quickly enough. He was still on port, so still keep clear windward boat when he infringed on Zim, so he's got the penalty there. Zim's on. Tony sails cleanly into the lead. Zim gets second. Tony third. Justin fourth. And then it'll be Arthur, Steve, and winner takes all.
Okay, let's get this last race set up. Hopefully my internet will last for it. And you can see who needs to do what for this last race. So yes, let's see Sunday 8. And of course there will be a, a second discard kicking in. I'll put it in stars just to keep things nice and mixed up. <laughs> All right. Let's get these results done. So Donnie picks up the bullet there. Zim with a second. Tony with a third. Justin fourth. Arthur fifth, Steve sixth, winner takes all seventh, and favorite in the Gillies household, uh oh, Stinky is eighth. We get a nine for DNF, and the DNCs get twelves. Second discard kicked in. I think unless Zim, even if Zim doesn't finish, I think it'd be very hard for Tony to overtake him. I think Zim might have this wrapped up mathematically. The big interesting battle, I think, is between me, Steve, Arthur, and Justin. We're all within three points of each other going into the last race. Of course, Justin has used cards with a couple of DNCs at the start. Yeah, this will be interesting. And nearly time to go on sequence for the last one. So who have we got? Yeah, Justin, Arthur, Steve and me are all in the race, as are Tony and Zim, Donnie and Arthur. So let's get going. And touch wood to be reasonably stable at the moment. And as I've said that, commentator's curse. And hopefully can at least finish this one and get a result on the board. for the start. There's a group here. Someone's going to get a penalty from that, I'm sure. So it gets Arthur. And go. So Donny has hit the line with speed. Looks like the best start here has been from Zim, though. He's very high up above everyone else. He hit the lace. Although that is Tony, who's managed to get a tack in early and head off into Breeze. So yeah, he's tacked early off onto the lifting tack, and he's done quite well out of that. Just about managed to get my bow across in front of Steve as well. 
I'm going to try and get in front of winner takes all. Donnie, on the other hand, looks like he's match racing Justin. They're heading off in a slightly headed tack, so unless one of them knows something that I don't, I think the boats out to the right are probably in a slightly better position. Donnie's tacked off now. Oh, looks like there's a big left shift coming in, looking at what's happened to Tony. Yeah, the wind is clocking slightly left. Meanwhile, all these boats are fighting with each other. Donnie's got probably the advantage out of this group. Ahead of Justin and winner takes all, Steve and Arthur are fighting there as well. I think that Tony's probably going to be able to get across in front of us, though. We're, not, we're definitely not going to be able to cross him. And yeah, he's going to just bounce me and Zim straight back towards these guys behind. And ideally I want to tack before Zim does so I don't run into dirty wind. Yeah, Zim's tacking now so I'm going as well just to try and keep my lane clear. We're all crossing the rest of the fleet. Looks like best the rest at the moment is Donnie. He should be able to get Justin on starboard when he tacks. And I'm just going to throw in my tack here. And I'm kind of banking on the fact now that Zim and Tony won't come with me. Uh, <laughs> well, that worked out well. I was kind of hoping that they'd focus more of each other, more on each other than me because they're the the leading group and fighting for the series. Whether whereas. In terms of the overall competition, I'm an irrelevance. So, right in the top mark in third, I'm happy enough with that. Donnie just behind, then Justin and Arthur jostling for position. And Arthur has picked up a penalty for perhaps hitting the mark or perhaps uh, mark room Donnie has come around just behind me and he is now going to attack I'm just going to try and stick on here because if Donnie tries to attack me any harder then Justin's going to be able to get him That much. Let's see, I'm just starting to creep out of the wind shadow now, which is what I wanted. Is it getting a little bit more of a jibing battle? Then I'll have clear air down to the bottom mark, but I think that's probably a little bit too much to hope for. And in the meantime, Zim and Tony are now... Tony's just about to sail into Zim's wind shadow. And Zim is now under boat. So what they'll be really fighting for at the moment is uh, inside overlap into this mark. If Zim can get his nose inside just to the starboard side of Tony there, he'll have mark room, but it doesn't look like he's managed it. So yeah, Tony's going to round clear ahead and then Zim. And Zim has had a bit of an adventure around that mark. Don't know what happened to him there. Could just be slight internet lag, and I'm just going to settle him on starboard. Get out of there, Zim. <laughs> so yeah, he's lost out there. I'm just going to try and... Oh, Donnie's dropped out. Don't know if that's kids pulling out the internet connection or domestic emergency. Or just the fact that he doesn't want the, the legend of Maradoni to be corrupted by a fourth place. But for whatever reason, he's dropped out there, so now it's down to 
Tony leading, then Zim, me, and Justin. Who's next? Justin's tacking off. I'm going to tack off as well. Again, as tempting as it is to try and fight with Zim, uh, Justin is more of a rival for me for the series, so I'm just going to try and keep a loose cover going on him here. Make sure that he doesn't get any massive advantages that I don't. Says the loosest of loose covers. It's 40 meters in between us, but. Just trying to play the averages, play the percentages. Tap back across. I will have to sail through Tony's wind shadow, but. I think I might actually, in this right shift, have gained a slight advantage on Zim, which is nice. Meanwhile, in the Castle Simple WhatsApp, they're chatting about cake. It's obviously all riveted by my commentary on this racing. Okay, I'm going to take Zim all the way to the ley line now, and tacking. Breeze has gone right, but I don't think it's gone enough right to get Justin back into the mix. Zim has not got room here. But he will attack me pretty hard now on this downwind, because that's what he's like as a person. Behind Zim. It's all gone very quiet. <laughs> now I'm trying to concentrate. I'm just trying to get clear air down this run and get position on Arthur and Justin, or on Zim and Justin. Yeah, that well known Zimbabwe and sailor Arthur Logan. Zim is now creeping across just to try and get something on Justin. I'm just about clear winner takes all's wind shadow as well. But those guys are on the better jibe to be heading towards the finish. And I can't get onto the jibe because there's a huge big wind shadow sitting there in my way. And now winner takes all is coming for me. That could be it as far as my race with Justin and Zim is concerned. Oh, Justin's picked up a pen. Zim is through, but I don't think I'm going to make it. I think Justin's got me. Yep, he has. Okay. So yeah, thanks once again to everyone for taking part. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday evening for the next the Castle Semple Virtual Sailing Championship. Um, 